this is Des Futak on day number 34 of my 90 day internet marketing challenge. I've just started a new series on uh, success, developing a successful mindset and I think I'm a third of the way through and I think this is probably maybe the kernel or perhaps the core of some of the most important ideas I'm going to be telling you about um, in my own business and just in life generally. So I'm you know, quite excited about this and I'm trying to keep calm about it because I think you know, if you get this right, then everything else follows on. So just try and listen up. I'll try and make this fairly short today because I've got a lot I want to say in the next few days and I don't want to kind of overload you in one session. And um, I just want to kind of scare you to start with, okay? So kind of get your, get your hard hats on, get your paper bags over your heads and I'm just going to scare you a little bit. Now, these, the, the information I'm about to tell you is actually um, from Robert Kiyosaki who's written a number of books including Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad 2, The Cash Flow Quadrant and some other books like Before You Quit Your Job and so on. So a lot of the information I'm telling you comes from uh, stuff that I've read from his books and so I can't kind of say this is where you can find the information on such and such a website. I'm just trusting that Robert is, has got his facts right and I think he probably has. I don't think there's any reason why he should exaggerate or, or spin a tale about these statistics. Um, so are you ready? Here we go. So earplugs in. Mufflers on, sunglasses on, here's the, here's the figures that are hopefully going to kind of make you think, oh my goodness me, at least they did when I first read them, and then I read on. So here we go, statistic number one. After five years, 90% of most businesses fail. Okay, that's statistic number one. Okay, of the 10% that remain, the next five years, so we've got a five year period, 90% fail, so of that 10% that remain out of the 100%, of that 10% that remain, in the next five years, 90% of those businesses also fail. So that leaves us, roughly speaking, with about one in 100 businesses after 10 years have survived. Now what causes this? This is obviously perhaps one of the biggest questions that uh, can be asked. And obviously, as I'm doing a series in developing a success mindset, I would I uh, hope that you can read between the lines of what I'm saying and realize that a lot of the reasons why businesses succeed and why businesses fail or why we fail to lose weight or why we succeed in losing weight or why we become successful in relationships or why we don't is actually what goes on between these two ears. Okay, It's very, very important that we have the right uh, approach, the right mindset as the one of the key foundations um, to success, okay? Now, obviously there's a bit more to that than there's a lot of practical things like having um, the right business model and I'll talk about that later on. Um, but just for today, I want to talk about what goes on inside our heads because that's one of the key things. All right, now this again is a quote from Robert Kiyosaki, so I hope you like it. The difference between winners and losers, okay, here we go. Losers quit after they fail. Okay, I'll say that again. Losers quit after they fail. What about winners? Winners fail until they succeed. Okay? Winners fail until they succeed. So there's a fundamental difference in philosophy here. One of the reasons why a lot of small businesses, Robert Kiyosaki would like to, to put forward, and I, I agree with him, a lot of businesses fail is because when the people start the business that they're in, they're perhaps doing it for the wrong reasons. They might be doing it because they want security. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad said to him, security has got an opposite. And the opposite is not insecurity, but the opposite of security is freedom. And Robert Kiyosaki said, well, why is that? I don't understand that. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. And of course, it's designed to kind of provoke thought. It's designed to make you think. And asking the right questions is very, very important. So here's uh, an answer to the question, I don't understand that. Please explain, or can you, can you help me here? Because I don't understand. Why is security the opposite of freedom. Well, Robert Kiyosaki suggests that, uh, or his rich dad suggested to him a long time ago, that one of the reasons why security and freedom are the opposites is this. Security is often like a comfort blanket. Security, what that does is it kind of muffles the roaring line of fear that we all have in our lives. Okay, we're all afraid of various things, and sometimes it's good to be afraid of some things. It's not wrong to have fear. But the rich dad said to, to Robert, well, you know, there are things that there, it's, it's good to be afraid of. It's good to be afraid that you haven't got enough money to provide for your family because at the end of the day, you know, fear can motivate you. And uh, other authors, um, um, you know, like the author of The 4-Hour Workweek, Timothy Ferris, suggests that actually that's not a bad thing to, be, to have fear. Okay, so it's kind of related to the Stoic philosophy. Now I'm going off a tangent. 
But the reason why um, in, uh, security is the opposite of freedom is this. When um, a person who wants security gets security, the fear doesn't go away. It stays there. They just muffle it. They suppress it with a security blanket because they're not really solving the problem. They're actually fear, their, their real fear, this is a quite, it sounds quite funny, but their real fear is actually the noise or the sound of fear or the feeling of fear itself. They want to muffle that, so they put a security blanket over it. So often, the security is really masking the fear of fear. Now, I, I don't like that sort of phrase because I think, what does that mean? What I prefer to say is, is that fear makes a noise, it kind of it makes a loud voice and it's attempting to kind of make you scared, isn't it? And so with a security idea, what you're doing there is you're saying, I'm going to cover over the sound, the experience, the feeling of fear by having security. So I'll have lots of insurance, I'll, I'll have make sure that before I quit my day job I'll have lots of spare cash so if it doesn't work out then, then at least I've got some money in the bank or a number of other reasons and I'm going to go into these, these differences in mindset in later sessions. Okay, So security is often a, a mask or attempt to patch over um, the, the kind of the feeling that I don't want to hear the sound of fear in my life because it's not a pleasant thing. Okay, so that's, that's the security side. Now Robert then goes on to say, freedom on the other hand, if you are free in your thinking, you confront the fear. So you don't, you're not afraid of the fear itself. You know there are fears, there are things inside of you that you're afraid about, but instead of kind of trying to smother them over by having security, what you do is you confront the fear and you see a way through, okay? What you do is you design things, or not design things, but you work a solution, okay? It's a bit like the difference between um, the, the two things I said yesterday. I can't afford it rather than how can I afford it, okay? Or how can I afford it rather than I can't afford it. Entrepreneurs need a mixture of different things in order to be successful, and one of them is a right mindset. So, where does this lead us then? What's the point? Well, back to what I said at the beginning. The difference between losers and winners. Losers quit when they fail. So they fail once and that's it. They've had enough. They go back to their security to muffle the noise of fear. Okay. Whereas winners fail until they succeed. So they make mistakes, they pick themselves up, they start again. And the greatest analogy I know is learning to walk. You know, most of the time when you're learning to walk between ages zero and two or zero and one, you're failing, okay? You're, you're falling over, you're bumping your head, you're getting up, you're falling down, you're getting up, you're falling down, you're getting up, you're getting up, you're falling down, you're getting up, you're getting up, you're getting up, you're getting up, you're falling down. Now notice as time goes on, because you're persisting, because you've got that persistence, you fail your way to success. And that's exactly the same with riding a bicycle. Now why should it be any different with anything else that we do in life? Well, part of it is the, what happens between 5 and 18, which is some, something to do with the education system, that it teaches us certain ways of thinking. Okay, you mustn't fail, you mustn't fail, you mustn't fail. Whereas in life, it's not like that. Life is much more, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, you succeed. Okay, you get there. Now, so, that, so a winner has a big vision, if you like, of what their end goal is, and they're really hungry to get it, because they can see other people around them. It's just like a little toddler looks at all the people around them walking, and says, I really want to walk, I want to go places, I want to be able to grab the thing off the shelf, I want to be able to do this. And so they kind of fail their way into success. All right, so I hope you understand that difference. I hope I've communicated it adequately. I'm going to say a lot more about this, obviously, because I've just got going, got my momentum going here. So tomorrow and the next few days, I should be talking to you more about failure and success. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do feedback on Twitter or Facebook. Okay, bye for now.